Well, I, I made this hat. That's why I'm wearing it. <laughs> you made that hat? Yeah, I had uh, had it custom made. This is the USA Martial Arts logo. It's embroidered. Who made that? Uh, Brennan. You remember Brennan? He makes everything. He makes hats, shirts, stickers. Zach told me to go um, get a decal for me, for my YouTube or whatever for him. Mm. He said he can do it, so I might take him up on that offer. Uh, all right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode two of Let's Talk. Um, what are, I don't know, I think we're just, uh, gonna go straight to the mar martial arts. I think it's, I think it's what the people wanted, so we're gonna go for it. Yeah, at least for the time being. Um, I know last week we, we went over just, uh, more or less the generic, uh, sense of some of our background and, and what we do and who we are, so... I wanted to dive back into the martial arts just a little bit more and, and get a little bit more in depth on certain subjects. Um, some things that maybe some of you guys out there uh, might actually be interested in hearing or even if you guys are just curious and, and have questions of your own, um, maybe it'll solve those and answer those or maybe it'll actually pose a new question. Maybe it was like, oh, wow, I never thought about that. Yeah. So, um, I figured it would be a good thing to just, you know, dig a little bit deeper and, uh, you know, once again, if everyone enjoys this, um, we could continue to do martial arts, but we could also do other things as well, uh, which we more or less will probably do in the end anyways. Yeah. Um, I know uh, David wanted to bring up a subject, and I also have one of my own, and I think they might coincide, so I would have David's uh, subject of pertaining to martial arts, of course. Um, what it is and, and, and how we could discuss it and, and maybe find some light on maybe just an idea or even just uh, the subject in general, I guess. Yeah, and, the li and there's kind of like a life lesson in each subject we talk about. It doesn't have to be just about the martial arts world, so if you're not uh, interested in martial arts, that's okay because in the message of what you might hear, it might actually bring some light to like what you may be going through. Who knows? So um, I didn't know if you wanted to start off with... Uh, what your subject was because I know you uh you've been thinking about this kind of thing for a while mm. I mean I'm more than willing to have you you know start just 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 a generalized subject that, that such pertains. a nice guy uh, I'm, a, I'm, a giver. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a giver so I wanted to talk about humility that's mm -hmm. like it's a good one I it's it a, I honestly think it's probably not just like in martial arts but in life man yes yeah. it's, it's something you gotta like t it's something you gotta take you know where i learned it from not only did i not only did i learn it from uh karate in the beginning fun there's a little secret i learned it from my uh from from getting in trouble a lot at home because a lot of talking back as a kid mm. like doing the wrong things and i know what right and wrong and if i do the wrong thing i get my stuff taken away and it's just like that's the foundation and then karate it was um it was the fact that's like the reason why you gotta have humility is I feel like if you it's like an ego you know what I mean mm -hmm. there's people with the ego and take I, I I I was that guy with that ego I will, I'm gonna I'm gonna go right into saying it okay. and this is this is how the story begins so I was a man with and this I was arrogant I was cocky I, I had a big ego right so a lot of people said you were good like oh you're so good mm -hmm. really good you're fast you're strong and I was like, thank you, thank you. And um, I don't let it get into my head. Sometimes I go into these tournaments, right? And this is full out truth, by the way. So I'm just putting it right on the table. Going to tournaments, you know what my mindset was? It was it was so bad, it, I hated it. It was, oh, I was nervous, don't get me wrong. I was so nervous. But at the end of the day, I was just like, oh, I knew I was gonna win. And I hated that. It was just that mindset. Yeah. And, there's, and there's nothing really wrong with that because I mean, uh, you know, it could also be considered confidence, and you're just overly confident. It doesn't need to be an ego or a cockiness. It, it just means you're really sure about what you know. I mean, yeah. so even though you're pinning in a negative light, it doesn't need to always be considered that. You know? Yeah, I hear you. It's like, but I think what made it even, um, I think the way it affected me was growing up into the karate world. I kind of yeah. just, and being the type of individual I was with the way I was raised and everything in my lifestyle. Yep. I don't know why it got into my head, but I feel like it just kind of felt really good. You know, it's like, oh, I'm mm -hmm. great. 
I'm 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 awesome. I'm perfect. <laughs> and then I lost to um in a in a sparring match. I'm just gonna cut right to the chase. I, I walked up, I did good in forms, I did good in weapons, and then sparring came. Sparring was always my top thing. I liked it all the time. Um I used to hate it. <laughs> but then after a while, like I said, I got better at it, and then I grew. And then that's when the ego came in. I took this 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 punch to the eye because I had my hands down. And I'm fighting like this for the people that can't see. I'm in like my fighting stance, but I'm jumping up and down, having my hands down. That was kind of <laughs> so. Oh, I went in for the punch. He dodged it. Boom! Last point. That was the last point I lost, and I never really. That was my first loss. I didn't know how to take it, and uh, I developed this thing like every time I had to do this like performance afterwards, I always felt like, no, I gotta be better. No, I can't, I gotta be better than this. Like, and then it was just an ego thing came into place. And then I had an instructor that came up to me at one point recently, a couple months, like months and months and months back and was like, slow your roll, know your, know your, know your experience. And keep push and just just swallow the pride because you'll get a lot better that way mentally. And I didn't understand it at first, but now where I'm at, bowing out after martial arts, I feel like wow. Looking back at the things that how I acted, the things that I did, I felt like I really was pretty cocky. And I wish I had taken it back, but I'm just like you know, nobody's perfect, right? No, no. And I had to swallow. I had to swallow my pride and be like, "Look, maybe, maybe I need to take a step back from martial arts to understand what the style is truly meant." Tung Sudo, Tung Sudo. It's not just ground and pound style. Mm -hmm. It's an art. And to respect the art, you gotta respect what. Well, like the unit, you gotta respect. You gotta respect it. Like mm -hmm. I don't know how many, how much clear I can be on that, but humility is a. It's a huge key. Huge key factor, I think. But. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree because, I mean, I, I could honestly say that at one point I was getting overly confident. I, I would put it in those words. It'd be cocky, basically. It's yeah. the same thing, I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and I, I also feel that most people that do martial arts have a time and place when it does hit them. And it's our own, um, it's our own job to throttle ourselves back. Yeah. Uh, I've also, well, I, I find it in some of my students at times, um, and, and keep in mind, I've been teaching for a while, so I'm not naming anyone current or past, or it's just, I've seen it. And I've had students where um, they would, you know, they, they would hit around the mid-teenage ages. Yeah, that was the age. That's around maybe, Ugh. right after puberty, between 13 and 16, it's like the prime time. All of a sudden, they realize they're stronger, they're faster. They're like a brute, no, the next Bruce Lee. Um, yeah, and, and <laughs> if they started at a young age, more than likely, they are probably a black belt or close to it. So they really are like, wow, um, you know, uh, for lack of a better term, you know, I, I, I could case some ass, you know. Yeah, okay, you could. Okay. <laughs> yes, you can. Yeah, you're aware Doesn't, of it. Yeah, you're aware now. Doesn't mean that you should. Um. In a tournament, if you're sparring, yes. I mean, obviously, that's what you're there for. You're there to compete. And it's I'm not going to use the term fighting because it's a, it's a sparring match. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's, it's an it's a intense form of tag, but that's your time to shine. That's when you could actually let ego, if there is any, and that's fine to actually have an ego because if you're a performer in any sort of the sense... You have to be somewhat of a show off internally, and that's not a bad thing when you know how to control it. Yeah. So, I tend to do that in tournaments, and the only thing is that when when um I'm kind of going off track of story here. No, but, it's all good. No, um, you're good. <laughs> uh, basically, they're here to listen. Yeah. When my students uh tend to get like that, since I've been there and I was really aware when I had to throttle myself back about um me getting cocky about certain things, whether it's sparring or maybe I was really good at weapons or, you know, or any of the subjects in, you know, karate could do. Love that um, sword. Ugh. Yeah. Sorry, I, I love that sword. Yeah. So it could go with anything. So <laughs> when I see my students 
get into that mode and, and you can see it coming and you can see how they carry themselves um not always bad but you can see it in the way they carry themselves and the way they talk sometimes they might be kind of a, a bully in class sometimes mm, okay um yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. not their fault it's just them thinking obviously it goes through their head and, and it's just a natural thing so i don't yell at them for it but i would guide them i'd be like hey you know this is how to control this because not saying you're not supposed to be confident but don't let it go to your head too much yeah um and you just gotta know it's, it's just another thing in your arsenal that you have to learn how to control when it's when it comes to martial arts you know you're, you're learning so much how to do stuff physically but mentally it, it adds stuff to it too so once you get something like that you have to know how to control it too so you do need guidance unfortunately some of us don't get it i didn't i mean i'm not gonna say that i didn't but i know that i throttled myself back um and it wasn't really until i noticed the repercussions of what could happen if i didn't mm. um sheesh yeah and i know i'm, I'm kind of talking a lot so i apologize no, no dude you're good i'm here but i was really good at sparring around that time period between i would say 13 and 16 maybe i'll make it a little bit broader around around 12 to 17. man that's the prime though that vibe yeah Ugh, it's, and at it's that, that point i was already a, a black belt so um for me i was already it, everything slowed down um it took longer be between gradings for me to move up to the next step so there was a lot of material learned but i learned it quick and then there was just a lot of time to do whatever <laughs> i wanted so i i descended I, yeah. <laughs> i decided <laughs> oh no you've to... been tongue twisted <laughs> oh no so i decided oh, <laughs> to uh to focus on sparring now picture this before this time i was not good at sparring i did not like sparring um it was actually my least favorite subject besides breaking boards yeah um, love that and i i wouldn't say i was afraid but to give an example yeah i was probably afraid of getting hurt in sparring just like in breaking i was afraid of breaking an arm or breaking this and i was young so there was risk in it and risk was you know there's a big reward if you do it but i really had to get over that fear internally so around those years i tended to uh try to start sparring more i, I made myself do i tried to get over a fear that i didn't know i had internally until i actually conquered it and once i conquered it i was i was good at it i i tended to do it a lot i like to do it in tournaments um, but the problem was, and this is where it relates to the subject yeah, of I'm, uh, I'm the like... humility part, because I know I'm, I'm ex over explaining this part, but I was very aggressive because before this time, I was extremely defensive, um, kind of timid in it. So I would always wait for them to do the attack before yeah. I would do something. Oh my God. Yes. I don't, I'm sorry to cut you off. Yeah, no, yes, no. dude. There's so many times I, I would, I would be like, okay, what you're going to do? What are you gonna do? Sorry, I stepped on your shoe. Sorry, I stepped no, on your shoe. I literally stepped on his shoe, IRL. But like, I'll be like, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? And I'll wait for the kick. But sometimes that would screw me over because it would be a nice little front kick. I love fighting the tall people. I'm mm -hmm. five foot five, but I love fighting the tall people because it makes me a better fighter that way. But there's this one dude, he coming for the side kick, first sparring match, whoop, boop, round kick to the face. I'm like, mm. I'm like, okay. All right, maybe I should attack more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but even then, Go ahead, keep going. But. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> just a funny little moment I had. Go ahead. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely like I, I get it. Uh. But I, I tended to uh, be aggressive, and um, like I said, it was the total opposite of who I was before. So I kind of did like um, flip the table, turn them around type of thing, and uh, I realized that at moments, and you know, a teenager. We've all been there. You, you tend to have like, I don't know, angry issues, I guess you could say, or some type of issue. Or something. <laughs> or, or something. It could Something's be anything. There. So um, I, I had a, a small little bit of an attitude that started to come out with the cockiness. And yeah. that would sometimes show through in sparring. And since I was an aggressive fighter, um, it looked, it masked itself very well. But if I got hit hard enough, it would kind of turn a switch on. And uh, I know a lot of martial artists have um, experienced the whole... Not not a blacking out because I don't want to use that like term. tunnel vision. The tunnel vision, but it's right? like a tunnel. It's I like to call it the, yeah the tunnel vision are, effect where it, are you like in the heat of the fight? You're in the heat of the yeah, fight. Yeah, and you yeah, don't yeah, really yeah. know what's happening. You yep. just did it. That's the oh my gosh! It's either you are in sync and you're in your zone mm -hmm. tunnel vision, 
or you are blacking out because you are super mad. Mm hmm. It's there. So that's when I first experienced that. And um, it, it makes you feel like you're on top of the world sometimes, depending on the scenario that you're in. The only problem is every once in a while, I would find that I would I would hurt people and it was unintentional or it was in the heat of the moment and I got really mad and I just I took it out on the person. That's even though I had instructors there telling me to, hey, you know, calm down. You don't need to do that. You know, they did it in a nice, generous way where I, I wasn't punished for it. Um, I, I found that I, I wanted to throttle myself back because a lot of people that I was sparring at the time, this was in mid class and, and I might have been hurting them. And these are my friends. So, yeah, seriously. Yeah, yeah that just yeah, it, that, it, I didn't even think and, um, I didn't even think of it like that. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. And it was in class. So in, in a tournament, it's different. And I'm not trying to say you can't be friendly to your competitors. Obviously, you do. Um, but a competition is a different scenario than a class. You know, classes is for learning. Tournaments is to show off what you've learned and, and to show how you're better than your opponent. Um, so I, I had to throttle myself back a little bit and um, I had to humble myself. Uh, it kind of slowed me down in the sense of it, me trying to control myself was hard enough um, on top of me trying to uh, grow in a certain subject that I'm not, I wasn't good at. So I was throttling myself back as I was trying to push myself forward. So it's like a fine line of slow movement up instead of like one or the other. Cause I knew if I just let myself go and I went with the whole aggressive fighter route that I would get stuck in it and I won't be able to pull myself out of it. But that's just my experience. Everyone else might be different, but yeah, I'm sure someone it, has their own. Everyone has their own and some people have similar, but that that's mine to say uh, for humility. I, that was the biggest one that I can remember around that time and age of teenager yeah i just find it like the humility just it's like taking the l it's like if you're in an argument or if it's just sometimes you know some people are <laughs> some people are so wanting to be right mm -hmm. that they will do they will twist and change something because they don't want to take that l because it's just something about saying i'm sorry to some people or like, I didn't want to say I'm sorry to this instructor one time. I was 12. I was 12. I, 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 I was, I was, a, I was a kid, but like, I, I really did him wrong. Um, we were doing, we were doing sparring mm -hmm. and I thought it'd be fun to sweep him. So I did it and it tripped him. And I laughed and I was like, but we were having fun. I didn't want to let it go. <laughs> I was like, yes, sir. But even then stuff like that get in trouble losing tournaments it's like you gotta learn to just take the l because it's it's gonna make you look so much better you really you really you really achieve something when you take that l it's it's it sucks when you start doing it too by the way when you start mm -hmm. when, when you lose you can hit listen you can handle it any way you want like in private whatever do whatever you want to do be logical about it i'm gonna say right now be, be logical on how you handle it but in public, somebody's reprimanding you, someone's like yelling at you, and it just feels like it's so out of line for them. You just gotta just take a deep breath and just be like, yes, ma'am, yes, sir. Plenty of times I was fooling around in karate, messing around, I got drop push ups, yes, yes, sir. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm the one that's the best. How am I getting in trouble? That's That was my mindset. Mm -hmm. That was my mindset. And I'm like, that, 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 that just makes it, it just it's it leaves a bad taste in your mouth afterwards you know what yeah. i'm saying definitely i just feel like when i was looking at it like when i was doing those push-ups i came up crying and he looks at me and he goes why are you crying i go because i didn't want to do push-ups i'm supposed to be better and he was like well prove it to me next time and by the way we're all equal here and i was like yes sir so it's just things like that it doesn't matter the belt we just all grow together you know what i'm saying yeah. So it's just like, there is no, uh, in the karate world, it's like martial arts world, whatever place you go to, you're representing a place that you train at. So if people see what you do, it's like, wow, I see them acting like this. Is this how they all are? You got to represent too. Mm -hmm. It's all about representation. It's like, for example, and I felt horrible about this and sorry, I'm talking long. No, that's fine. <laughs> I was, I talked to somebody, Um, I had a, 
Oh, I was having a bad day. And I gave... I was talking to somebody that was like a mutual friend that I had no idea about. Um, I was kind of being a, a jerk to them. And my brother texted me saying that um, he knew the person. And he was like, hey, man, like your brother wasn't really cool about me. Like the way he talked to me. I was like, oh, crap, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? It's like you never know who you're going to walk into, uh, talk to, run into. But um, it's just sometimes you just got to swallow your freaking pride. I don't know how many times I can say that. Yeah. But that, listen, um, we're going into your subject in a second, right? Yeah, yeah. No worries. Okay. Because I was just going to say, like, my closing statement on this one, Mm -hmm. like, for anybody, for anybody, oh, no, hold on. Uh, I thought my odd the audio was messing up. That's uh-huh. fine. It's okay. Um, for the people that uh, we were looking at our monitor because we were thinking that there's an audio glitch. We're good. We're good. We're all good. We're all. Look at if there's anybody that you just want, just you'll grow if you just take the L. Trust me. If if you're wrong, just take the L. All right. You you grow that way, and it may and it may suck over time, but like. Sometimes that loss is something you need to win something later, all right? So that, that's what I got to say. And to my boy over here, go. For the next subject? <laughs> yeah, for the next subject. Okay, okay, let me clarify <laughs> that. I thought you were waiting for a closing statement out of me. No, but, you're good. Yeah, go so, ahead. Go ahead. You're good to talk. Okay. So the next thing I wanted to go into, just because I saw something about it earlier today, actually, um... And it, it posed a question in my head, and I figured maybe someone else uh, has input on it, or maybe I could try to shine some light on it if I I'm just kidding. mention it. <laughs> you know, I was raising my hand. Um, <laughs> so tournaments, right? This could be generic, or it could be martial arts. I'm gonna take the martial arts approach on it because that's the way I'm referring to it. But um, it could be taken any sort of the way. Right? Mm. So that way everyone could be a, a part of this. Um, but once again, it's from a martial arts approach, so the questions might be a little tailored towards that. But the main question was well, there's actually three um, tournaments, right? Okay. So we have martial arts tournaments. I read something about. Let me start in reverse here, because I'm reading it backwards. But um, some people say that tournaments could be. A form of meditation and I read I can that. see that I can see that and it's something I never really thought of because um, it's a different take on my thoughts of what a tournament is it, it makes sense but how does it make sense so that's a question to you and then I'm gonna try to give my best answer as well meditation yeah why, why would it be considered like a, a meditation or a meditative meditative uh, thing to do I think because when pressure is all on there, it's like the the only thing you can do is just breathe and focus and concentrate. When you have something in front of you that that's a a, 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 a not promised goal, but shown in your face that if you do this, you can get that. And it's it's kind of I want to say kind of peaceful, but chaotic same time because when when everything's chaotic when you're i will say on deck when you're on deck that's when the chaos hits but agreed agreed this is the moment right you're there you're about to be called up david massey yes sir yes ma'am your eyes flick and it's like this i am a different person i am not I am not that person that when I walked in the building, I am a completely different person right now. I am this guy that is going to perform my ass off. And then right when I finish and go back in Chumbi, I chitty up, I bow, boom, I'm back to myself. I'm relaxed. I did it. It's all the adrenaline, all that focus, all that concentration. It It's something that you would normally do in a meditative state. You would just sit there on, on knees or how or on or um, crisscross applesauce, and you know you would just close your eyes, take a few deep breaths, 
People have that own right meditation. You gotta have that focus, concentration. I think that's where my version of it is. And I like it. Yeah, I agree. I guess to take a, a slightly different approach, um, because I agree with yours, yeah. and you worded it different I than, I, that. than I would. <laughs> yeah, because I, I agree with that. But um, I'm not even going to say but, because that's definitely it. But a different way to say it, or maybe a different way from my point of view, I guess. Okay. Um, it is more or less, it's, it's kind of the same thing as yours. So just to give everyone a <laughs> heads up here, because it's kind of the same. Go. But um, okay, so <laughs> you're good. You're good. <laughs> uh, for me, at least, when I go into a tournament, and uh, I, I always get very nervous. It, it, it really depends on the tour tournament, but I, I'm usually nervous. Um, so it, it's almost like a workout internally. I get this build up of pressure, just like he said. Yes, you feel it in your <laughs> chest. You, you oh, might even be a little bit shaky. Like it's yeah. almost anxiety. But it's not. It's a different form of anxiety. It's like excitement, but terror. It's like you're ready. It's excitement and terror at the same yeah. time. You're scared and you're happy. Uh, and sometimes you're like, more or less, yeah. you're like, I just want to do this. You you want to get over with. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then the, the buildup happens. And like you said, until you're next, and then they call you up to do whatever you're supposed to do. Um, you kind of just let it out. And you almost... You almost tunnel vision. I'm feeling like it the now. Sparring. I'm yeah. fe I want to see the ah, yeah! like I want to do it. But, ah, it's just that that's the fire you feel. Yeah, Ooh. and then in the end, you you almost you go back for me. You know, martial arts wise, you go back to Chun B, which is our attention stance, and then you, you bow, which is like our sign of I'm done. You do feel relief. You don't feel 100 percent relief yet until the verdict of whoever places and yeah. who gets what. But once that's all done and you're done with the ring or whatever you're supposed to be doing, you just feel like this ultimate sense of bliss. It's like, it's like, a, I'm trying to give a good analogy here. Imagine you're scared of roller coasters, right? Oh, I see where you're going with Imagine this. Imagine you're scared yeah. of roller coasters uh -huh. and someone's like, hey, um, Go on this roller coaster with me, whether it's a friend or who, whomever, right? Yep. You're like, oh, I really don't want to. But you don't want to look, you know, you, you don't want to look scared, okay? We'll, we'll just Take say off. that. Here we go. So <laughs> you go on it, and you, you kind of like it because it's like an adrenaline rush. It's like, uh, for the people that feed off of that stuff, it's like, oh, wow, this feels nice. Like, I, I'm doing something that scares <laughs> me, right? Yeah. And then the drop happens, which is usually the worst part. I will kind of consider that, like, the on-deck part of you know the roller coaster because you're about to go into whatever you're doing once you're on it's enjoyable uh like if we were to do a form or something you're doing it you're kind of just letting it out you're releasing that pressure and then at the end you feel great right so for people that do that stuff you kind of know the feeling it's like wow that was cool it, but at the beginning you wouldn't have said that you wouldn't be like that's not cool <laughs> you know because you're, I, you're I scared <laughs> or, or, or excited at the same time it's an adrenaline boost so I find that almost meditative. I hope I said that right. Well, um, they'll, 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 they'll let us know. Da -da -da. I know somebody that will tell me. <laughs> Someone's going to put the spell check. Uh, you <laughs> misspelled it, sir. It's like, oh, thanks, um, comment. <laughs> I'll pin you for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it feels like meditation because if we were to do the traditional form of, like he said, what people would think meditation, you're, you're home, you know, you're sitting there. What, you know, that could be actually stressful too. whatever they're doing. I, I'm not going to assume what they're doing because I tried it once and it worked, but it, I'm not knowledgeable in that field. OK, so I'm not going to say more on that, but. It's, it works the same way. You feel great. It gives you like good internal feelings. Um, yeah, so on and so forth. I could keep saying the same thing over and over, but. But besides that, it's just a great feeling, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just a nice little fire in the heart. I mean, sure, it makes you it makes the heart pump like nine times faster. But like at the end of the day, it's. Did you ever? Okay, that, I gotta get in on this real quick. After sure. that, after the after the adrenaline hits with you, and I mean this, like, your heart. I, I can't explain it. Can anybody, like, let us know how you feel in the comment section about this, e especially in SoundCloud. Everybody that's listening. 
whoever's done a sport or anything like presenting a class, presenting whatever, what well, you're presenting to something, and that part goes, and then when you're done, when does that, when do you feel that like immediately stop? Because I feel like afterwards, my heart just feels normal, but I don't know when that moment stopped. I just feel like it just kind of happened. It just disappeared. Yeah, like that's how I feel after the. You after can't all find that. the climax in the relax part. Yeah. It's just there's like an in between where it's just it's forgotten. Maybe it's relief. Yeah, maybe it's that's like, I don't know. maybe that's what it is, but probably. Um. It's, it's like also like it's like a high, I guess, like a certain high, like a, a the adrenaline rush, I guess. And then it just disappears. It's almost like, and the only reason why I'm bringing this up is because I actually had this, um, this question pop into my head recently. You know when you're sick, yes. And then you know when you're not sick. Do you know when the in between happens? <laughs> what? No. Just I... think about it. Like you know, you're sick. You you're coughing, sneezing, whatever. And then you know when you're completely done with the cold, but the in between, do you really notice it? I can feel because like, you're like you're either you're sick or you're not. You're like this. You're never like I'm done with it or I'm almost done. I have one day left. It's just on or off. That is, I never even thought that. And I know it's such a random thing to bring up, but that popped into my head because recently I, I had a cold and I was thinking about. It. I was like, wow, I, I was sick. Now I'm not. But when did it end? <laughs> What? It was just yes and no. It's bothering me now. And it, it kind of, <laughs> yeah, it was eating at me a little bit. So, yeah, another thing. It's it's all kind of the same idea, just different ways to look at it. I'm making that an Insta reel. That, that whole thing, <laughs> what you just said. I'm, I'm going to reel that in. See what see what people say. I'm really curious. I'm sure there's a scientific thing about it, but, you oh, know. Oh, that, was, that, that a... tripped me out. I'm, like, really thinking about that. Because <laughs> it, it really is like that. What the heck? What was the other, what's the next question okay, before so I die? This is <laughs> this is all about this is still pertaining to the tournament subject, but those like I said three questions. So that was one down. Two, um I am gonna uh say this in a, a karate uh sense of the question because I don't know any other ways to put it. But was uh, a tournament. Mm -hmm. How does it help? Like, I'm not talking about physically, because we kind of went over the whole physically meditative, you know, a, meditation part. It seems vague, though. How does it help? How does it help? Okay, let me put it into these words. How does it help uh, a martial artist on their journey? Okay. Let's, let's say it like that. Well, every journey has a goal. Mm hmm There's always a... <laughs> think of it like, there's a, life is a movie. You got the character, you got the setting, you got the plot, and then you got hopefully a good ending mm -hmm. <sighs> um my, my journey like we're talking about like what like um this is just a generic question not a not not a not personalized like from white belt to black belt it this is like um if for example let's just say you're doing martial arts and your school and i'm saying this as uh you know because some schools may do it some schools may not um, let's just say the school's like, hey, um, we would like you to do at least one tournament a year on your journey up to black belt or a certain amount of tournaments to get your black belt. Just kind of like a, a, a feat, like something to achieve to get to the next step to grow. Got you. Yeah. So how does it help you uh, basically grow? How, how does it enhance your learning? I see. When I think I was pretty like... I think I was pretty in the like I was pretty. I was a pretty person back then. <laughs> I was pretty focused as a as a white belt. I really wanted to just achieve something. I think me I'm I'm slightly a perfectionist, and I will be honest, I'm a slight perfectionist. Um but I know like nothing is perfect, obviously. But when it came to me at the time, um as a white belt, I think focusing on you know, like it's like it's like school. For some people the best way i can say it man i really want to pass this class i really want to get my next belt maybe if i do the homework and study in class maybe if i practice my forms in the self-defense i can actually see i'm putting two and two together the one and ones and whatever the one and one and each work the same they're both similar and I, I knowing i think it was really cool for me learning new learning new stuff i loved it I love the fact that like I was able to learn 
why does this move do this? Why does this move do this? Ping on Edon for some people. Um, uh, oh my gosh, originally for us, or there's uh, Seiki Young Ilbu or Kicho Young uh, Ibu for some people, you know? Yep. So, like, I wanted to know the, the, the language behind it, what this is, what that is. And I think knowing more within that belt frame, white to orange, orange to yellow, I felt like I was just, to me, I just knew I was getting better. And I think as I get got older on my journey, I realized not only am I learning these forms, but I am developing these muscle skills, these fast reaction drills, I'm learning how to remember, <laughs> like, I'm learning how to multitask, I'm learning my left from my right, I'm learning how to jump, I'm learning how to roll, I'm learning how to block, I'm learning how to look and keep aware of my surroundings if I'm ever in a dark alley or something like that, if that ever happened. I'm just saying, like, I think on my journey, I felt like now the buildup happens, now I feel like, okay, oh, oh crap, like, look at this. I'm, I'm sitting at, like, I'm 22 at the time, I'm looking at 22, I'm like, oh my god, this martial arts taught me a lot about, a lot about discipline, a lot about taking the L. A lot about going for the goal that you want to get if you see it it's possible if I want to get if I was a white belt and I was gonna be an orange belt it's possible right yeah just gotta put in the work there it is that's my answer I think I think that's what it is just just the knowledge of me knowing something new you know what I mean that's so, what gets me so how would that pertain to a tournament would you say that because you would let's, let's just say you were to go to a tournament uh, as a white belt and each belt all the way up okay um, would you say it it, uh, it helps reinforce the teachings? That, absolutely. Yeah, I, I believe it absolutely because not only you're not just there to perform just for the judges or anybody else. You're performing for yourself. Mm -hmm. You are you are trying to prove to yourself that you did better than the last time. So it's almost like I'm not going to look at a black belt do the first form dramatically bad. I would hope that I would see a black belt do the first form as a black belt should. You know what I'm saying? So like if I'm like a if I'm a white belt and I do Kichung Ilbu and I look like look like bad i look bad like i can't even do it then i gotta go to the next tournament with like i gotta look better than that man because mm -hmm. the results results man i gotta put in that work because it, it's just in tournaments it's like a test at school taking a test it's yep. literally a test like oh wow how did i fail looks like i didn't well the teacher says i didn't study hard enough what? How did I not get my next belt? How did I not get my trophy? Well, it looks like you got kicked in the face and you um, couldn't hold your kick on that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just stuff like that. I think it's a lot of growth within the art itself. Like you're, 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 you're evolving and it won't happen. Nothing happens overnight Yeah. because you're going to start thinking stuff as time goes on. You're going to start saying, oh snap. It took me until I was 22 years old to realize Oh snap, this is trying to teach me humility. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's stuff like that. That's why I think the the journey is so important. Yeah. And it kind of reinforced the first subject that was brought up with humility too. Um my take on it is you know, it it it, it works with yours. Um because I feel like tournaments you know, why should you do it? And and well, how does it help, right? Yeah. That's what we're going based off of. How does it help? Um, it, like I said, it, it reinforces everything you learn, in my opinion. So even um, if you didn't know a lot, it tests your own ability to let you know where you stand, basically. So even if you're a white belt and everyone's a beginner and, and you're in a tournament and you're doing forms and... You guys are all the same belt. You're doing the basic form. Let's just say you guys actually did the exact same form. That doesn't always happen. But if that was to be true, right? And you're competing. And then you obviously have to get placed. Like who was better than the other person? That placement is kind of telling you how you, you fare in your knowledge based off of what you learned. Yep. Because if that's what you're saying, I know the most. Like, let's just say I did form one, whatever form one it could be. It could be your style form one. It could be. Any styles form one. This is probably your first form. And I went against everyone else that did the same form. And I got third. Okay, well, I knew that I picked that form because that was my best form. Obviously, I am not the best because I got third, but, but you could be. it doesn't mean that I can't be. 
Right. Because let's just say you excel in class and uh, you, you're you doing great and you do that form the best in your school or in that class at the very least and you compete with it and you still don't get first. Does not mean it doesn't mean that you're bad at all. It just means that there is better people out there. All of these things, like yeah. humility, respect, all that stuff. It's, it's all it's stacking. All it's stacking, stacking onto each other. This is it. And, and it doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. Once again, you don't need to get upset. You don't need to get mad. Yeah. Um, you ha Sometimes you have to lower your pride and be humble about it. But it will make sure it gives you a goal because before you can see it because you're already maxed out in what you could see beforehand. If you never did a tournament, you're never going to know what you could be. Yeah. Because there's <laughs> stuff that even in my school or even in my style, if I was to go to an open tournament where there's everything and I'm competing against a style I've never seen before, and they beat me. Obviously, they know something that I don't. And, and that's obvious because it's a different style. But they did something that the judges preferred or thought was better than what I could do. Yeah. And I yeah. would have never known that unless I tried to do it which makes me want to do it because that's going to help me with my growth because I thought I was already up here when in reality there was a person right here and if you can't see my hands there's, it's just like a you know this person's higher than me and then I'm yeah. right below him. <laughs> I thought I was all the way up on top just one step ahead or another step ahead of that and I haven't seen that step yet so stuff that you don't really realize until you see it and that's why it's good to have an open mind and go to these things even if you don't compete, you just got to look at it. You just got to witness it sometimes. Like even then, when you have have yourself record, by the way, if you can, if you have want, if you want to know where you're at, watch your form, watch that. Yeah, I've, what I, I don't know, I think I decided to privately watch my own like form. It was a uh, Kusan Kun, and uh, it's a long form in the Tungsudo world and sixty something techniques in it. And I'm doing it. I'm looking at the. I'm looking at the uh, video. I'm like, wow, this is crap. <laughs> this is garbage. What the heck? So I look and I say, and I look back and I just be like, I really did that at the tournament. What, that's why. That no wonder I got placed that the way I did. Yep. And then I'm like, all right, well, let's make sure that doesn't happen again. I can honestly say that the exact same thing happened to me in the last tournament I did. I did the exact same form as him. We have different variances, but it's the same form. And it was an open tournament, so I was going against all styles. And I placed well in the last few. Um, you did who's on Kun recently? This last one, yes. The one that that one that I did? Uh, no, this is the one that. Well, the one you went to, to the. This the one, one was Rhode in Island. This one was in Rhode Island. Oh, good for you. So I did okay. that form, and it was a big category. There was around five or six people different styles we had some japanese styles um i don't know what style they were there was actually kung fu in there mixed in and there was uh, a few tanks to those so some that were familiar to me is the uh sorry to cut you off real quick is the kenpo those guys are the ones that go like this and they're and they're like really quick on their hands it looked like that it, it was possibly that style it's so yeah. it's so quick they're like it looks it looks very nice it. it's it's its, it's so own good. It, it's so beautiful if they can master that it's own style in itself it's something that yeah, I, I can't and i can't do it because i'm not taught that so. a nine-year-old nine-year-old was kicking back and go i was like this kid's crazy yep. <laughs> it was awesome well go ahead sorry so <laughs> i i did the same exact form as him and i had someone record me because i've never seen myself compete in an open tournament um i think you recorded me one time but the kick that i actually did really good got blurred out on everyone's camera it's crazy but um <laughs> it's, just, it's just too perfect to be seen man <laughs> so we did the i did the forum i watched everyone else's form it's exactly how i remembered it because at this point i was on deck so you know ba boom ba boom ba boom <laughs> my vision is literally a little bit blurred so i'm about to compete i compete and i kind of tunnel vision because all the adrenaline is finally being released sometimes you actually can't see that well but from my knowing, I did the form to the best of my ability. Yeah. Later on, when I calmed down, had a clear head, clear vision, um, I saw the video <laughs> and I looked at it. And, and keep in mind, I, I didn't place the best. Um, I wasn't the worst. I wasn't the best. I was kind of mid-range. I don't remember exactly what I placed, but it could have been better. Um, I watched my video and then I was like, wait, how did I rank or how did I get this place? 
compared to this person? Like, why? And then I watched the form and I realized, I was like, wow, it looked a lot different in my head. I thought it looked way better. I saw a lot of faults in my own form, you know, because I, I don't watch myself do forms. I, I don't have a mirror that's big enough where I can see my whole form being done. So after seeing that, I was like, wow, I should have done this kick better. I should have had a deeper stance here. I shouldn't have um, wiggled here when I placed my landing, whatever move it was. Yeah, it's that shoulda, woulda, coulda method. Yeah. yeah, and it's like, wow. Yeah. So if I did this, this, and this, I would have done better. So I didn't feel like it did my best. Doesn't mean I can't try it better, because now I know what to look for. But yeah, <laughs> that's, that's that. So just to give you my side on that. And then the last part of the question, which was it's super generic but it's just something i put together so keep in mind go for it um Let's hear it why is competing in a tournament important why is it important overall in my opinion just because honestly i don't even think i need to say it because if you guys listen to everything we just said how it all coincidentally just stacked on each other and meshed that was not on purpose that guys. was not planned we did not plan <laughs> what i like to say is when we do these podcasts here we never really plan it we just plan certain things to ask everything else just flows yeah so the fact that everything else just kind of stacked on each other and um actually related to each other it when it wasn't intended to felt like i was at a church service like yeah <laughs> we just like solved the problem a word problem that we didn't even have the answers to nor did we have like the actual um, yeah we just ability said, to do you know, so i love it we just did it so why is it important teaches humility it it, it humbles it, it helps your journey um it opens your eyes uh that way it can help you grow uh there's so many things. It also keeps you physically fit. I also wanted to mention that because I know I didn't touch on it. But sometimes when you go through those times where, <clears throat> oh, I don't feel like um, I'm having a challenge. Let's just say you hit that point. You don't have a challenge. There's no point to train harder because why are you going to train harder if there's no challenge already? Sometimes you need to do tournaments to test that. Yeah. And that's going to make you push harder because you're going to get physically fixed. You're going to be like, wow, I'm not as fast. Oh, I, my stances are as good. Let me work on my squats. Let me get deeper in my stances. Let me do this. Let me do that. You overall will be healthier and you kind of form your own self. It, it, it all together, as in meditation, you, you kind of build yourself internally and externally, physically, mentally. You know who I think would be really good at martial arts? And I think... This is a perfect example. You heard of a gym rat? Yeah. So these are these guys, right? They go in and it's almost like they're training for that, like holding that, that the bell or what is it? Like the bench press for like five seconds and they lift. Ah! Then they drop it. It's like they are heavy. They are dedicated. They go to it. And then um, I've seen these, these gym rats and they're huge. And I'm like, I'm, pr I'm gonna promote martial arts real quick to these guys that are buff and look like The Rock. Look it, I think you could develop so much from that, I'm just saying, because these are these big guys who have almost like almost more than perfect bodies, I'm just saying. And yep. th these these guys train to the T, and uh, this they're, they're bigger than this panda bear right here that I have <laughs> over here. But like, the point is like, these guys can imagine a really, athletic imagine sparring a gym rat and then you get kicked in the head by him like but the guy has control they'll develop that control from the style and the reason i say that you guys should definitely do it i don't think lifting weights in my opinion is as difficult as performing a form because if you give it your all with that type of relaxation and, the, and if you, you know that method, strong and then relax at the end kind of deal. Mm -hmm. If you just have that kind of method, do Kusan Kun and then tell me how, you, how the arms feel, keeping those arms up. Cause there's, cause I feel like, you know, they're so busy lifting the weights, maybe a new type of method to help them. You know what I mean? Like there's different ways, different things in the martial arts world that can benefit them. Yep. So that's what I'm saying. Like, martial arts is a journey for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Doesn't matter. And to be honest, that could go both ways too, because 
if we went to heavy weight lifting it's going to teach us a lot more muscle control than oh my god yeah it would just too. vice versa it, it would switch it, like if you could do both at the same time you're basically captain america i mean you're, <laughs> you're a superhuman then because if you have the power and then you learn the speed of karate while contracting and relaxing your muscles at the same time board breaking would be phenomenal for them board breaking would be phenomenal oh my god arms would be so boom, tight boom boom sparring oh. you'd be kind of uh, uh, feared because Break, yeah uh, you'll like that's gonna hurt <laughs> yeah um and uh please be gentle uh, yeah. giants <laughs> if we spar please be gentle there, giants. There's, a, there's a lot to it and i feel like it's a uh, yeah like just like anything because there's also uh, a lot of people that mixed um gymnastics with martial arts and look what that turned into for those that don't know um extreme martial arts or xma basically was originated from um the mixture of gymnastics with martial arts and from that you got tricking i did not know this. that's why you're gainers yeah all right yeah technically uh the gainers, gainers. Like, a, like it's a form of a flip it's a f that was uh i'm not gonna say it was a gymnastic thing but it was based off of that if it wasn't yeah the flips and the tumbles and the all butterfly that stuff. kick too the butterfly kick yeah um yeah, all those things were, that was two things combined, and then it turned into this. And you know what's crazy about that? The gymnastics, or oh, the gymnastic, the gymnastics <laughs> and karate, right? That created XMA. XMA is considered the new traditional version of an open um, style of doing forms, an open style of doing weapons, and honestly, sometimes a little bit of board breaking, because a lot of people incorporate it in there. So... At one point, they were separate. You combine the two, it's almost a new normal. Yeah. It just turned into a, an extra thing to add into an arsenal that could actually help martial artists together grow. It also gives diversity. When before, it was traditional, traditional, nice and tight, very strong, very stiff. You added yeah. Flexi yeah, more flexibility very, to very it. Very, very formal. Yeah. Yes. Now imagine adding more flexibility into it. Flips. And a lot of people, you know, I'm sure a lot of people that didn't do martial arts or never did it or have like the um i don't know stereotypical thought of it you know a lot of people are yeah, like oh wow you do karate you yeah. could do a backflip you could run on walls you could uh do this this and that you, you could jump 20 feet yeah yeah i've heard the... it all trust me i was oh. gonna say, i was like looking at you i was like you've heard it too <laughs> yeah that's the first question they say oh. oh you do karate show me how to do a flip it's like well i don't know oh, you how get to. that question i get the oh you do karate oh so what would happen if i i'm like dude and you also get that question too You're like oh so what if i was to do this to you right now it's like well i feel uncomfortable you just asked me that oh my god first of all because now you, is that a threat <laughs> listen to this one real quick ready mm -hmm. um i'll let you finish in one second it's real quick this guy was like i was doing well, i was teaching a, a krav maga class yes and I, we were talking about the uh bullets and everything and the gun so i was like well what would happen like i don't know man like what would happen if i if i uh shot you five feet away be like well i bite the bullet and spit it back <laughs> and i'm like he's like what and he's like if you shoot me i die <laughs> like, first off like if you shoot me you kept your distance bravo mm -hmm. and you killed me you're a murderer good job but now it's like what happens to you you go to jail that's it that's the defense <laughs> i'm dead i got nothing else to say I just people ask me the dumbest questions. Sometimes the defense is not well, it's not to get in the predicament. Nah. <laughs> and then after that, it's your options go from this to this to this to this. Eventually you might have one option. If it doesn't work, then it's, that's it. Yeah, that's some, it's some people think of like look at us like superheroes. This brings the humility by the way. You're not a superhero. You it just cuz just because you see it in the movies doesn't mean it can actually happen. I just want to make that clear. Sometimes you just look at I've my one of my friends was robbed. He's a guy in jujitsu, strong boy, strong boy, like six foot two, Batman, mm -hmm. jujitsu, almost a black belt. God bless him. And this guy was getting robbed by a guy shorter than him. My the, my guy could have decimated him, but the mate, but it, it didn't matter because he had a gun. Guy was like, it was a bank. No, it was out of Wells Fargo. And it was just late at night, robbed him. And I was like, why didn't you like do your martial arts? And he was like, a gun, man, I'm not gonna risk that. I don't care how big I am. I don't wanna take a bullet. And I'm like, yeah, seriously. Yeah. Sometimes you just gotta do it. Yeah. Sometimes so, when it comes to martial arts, especially when there's a gun involved. Swallow the pride. Yeah, unless 
there's only one option where it's you do something or die and my I, 20 bucks is more valuable than my life well I, and I, and I say this with a grain of salt because Ugh. this is a this is a very serious thing to say yeah I know but my opinion on it is like Next. for example if you're getting robbed and you're at gunpoint and you're he's very close to you it's a 50 50 chance you're gonna live like let's just say yeah the gun is it's, it says pointed to something vital where if you pull the trigger you die right um just do what the person says honestly just try to get out of it the way any victim would play innocent play like you don't know anything yeah it's hard to be in those scenarios like, yeah because we we can't sit here and say what we would do or what we would because it's like we've been taught i don't know either I, I can't tell you how many times like i would learn i've learned over i don't know 75 different combos in the martial arts world of sparring mm -hmm. i do three so, <laughs> I do three, but I do it in my own way. And it's just like, everybody has their own arsenal. Everybody has their own yeah. what if, different ways. It's just, try, just be aware of your surroundings. Yeah. Yeah. And like that... I said, and if you have to do something, just, just know that there's a risk with it. So, but, you have to think everything through. That's all. Was there, um, uh, was there another question? Or was no, that it? That was basically all the subjects I had. Okay. Off the top of my head. Yeah, that's crazy how it kind of just stacked onto each other like one after the other after the other yeah i guess that means it works <laughs> yeah it just worked out that's hello try martial arts we we insist i mean everybody has their craft some people do blacksmithing some people do archery people do axe throwing i mean people uh pottery anything is a hobby there's a passion there's a dream um whatever Whatever, make, whatever gives you that dedication and motivation to keep going forward. I don't have any more liquids to swallow. <laughs> I've got no water. <clears throat> but just know your path. Uh, know your ego level. Just and always be kind. All right. That's all I gotta say. Yeah. But um, martial arts definitely in tournaments. Martial arts definitely helped me evolve. Cause there's a lot of people that are better than me and still better than me. And, you know, oh, by the way, I wanted to close in on that. I don't really care who's better than me. I just want to be better than my damn self that I was last tournament. Yep. At this point, it's just Thank like, you. how can I block the next person? I'm not even going to look at the person as like this. It just, we're, we're in, in my, in my, when I'm sparring this individual, it's, it, I'm looking at them like, all right, what can I do to best this? What can I do to best myself? How can I, how can I close the distance? There, no offense to the people that I'm sparring, but once, the, once they say, see jock, which means go. Uh, you are a, you're, it's, 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 uh, you're a bag. <laughs> you're a bag with, I will obviously hit with control. That's, that's what I was taught. Yeah, but hear me, I'm just, uh, you're a target. It's what I'm saying. Like you are, what one instructor told me when you're in there, you hate each other, but you're brothers. And I was like, huh, if I was to hit my brother. Would I really knock him or would I give him some love taps? Yeah. Yeah. So it's looking at that, like black belts. Okay. They're going to hit harder. But it's going to be a little extra love. Okay, treat it with a look at like a grain of salt. All right. It's like, I love you so much. I love you so much, but I got you. It's S okay. Just that's that's just how it is. But um, I don't know if you wanted to say anything else. No, I I honestly just, you know, some closing remarks, basically. And I think we're already doing that. So <laughs> yes, pretty much. Um, yeah, so those are the subjects I wanted to particularly bring up just because it, it came up in my mind. And I know there's probably other people that thought about that. Um, also, once again, um, if you guys want to hear more about martial arts or takes on it or even techniques. And I, I emphasize techniques because I actually have a few ideas on the ways that we could actually explain it. Ooh. Um, so if you guys are interested in that, just please let <laughs> us know. Um, if not, we will talk about other things as well, which we are already planning on. So please let us know, viewers and listeners, what you would like to hear more of. That way we know how to best format our podcast towards you guys and we're okay with doing two different types too if you want to hear some of this and some of that we could do both that's fine yeah we'll always but um the thing is we'll always like talk about the subject say like i don't know say like you want to know about gaming right yeah we're always going to swing that into the martial arts world and how it can always muster in with everything because i think martial arts teaches the balance like everything's equal quality everything unifies you know what i mean everything yeah. has its own that's what it's really trying to represent and i think that's it's kind of like a third eye kind of opening deal it's like yeah, transcending yeah. oh wow this <laughs> makes sense it's like a epiphany that's it's the word epiphany, i'm looking yeah. yeah but um 
Guys, let us know in the comment section on SoundCloud and mm -hmm. YouTube what you would like to hear. If you guys have any questions, please, if it pertains to your own backstory or like something that you're going through, let us know in the comment section. Email us, please. My email will be there in the about section on the channel. And uh, I, we, we appreciate you guys coming in the first episode. You guys, you guys went crazy on the views. Thank you so much. We appreciate yeah. that. Like, thank you guys. It, it means a lot. Episode five, when we, we just wanted to update y'all ep after episode five, um, we'll s try to start bringing other people in. Mm -hmm. So the list will be opening. So you'll be able to hear more people have their own opinions on different things. And that's when new different topics might go into the martial arts world and hearing other pieces from other people. So that's all I got to say. Are you good on everything? Yeah. And also, if you guys want to add your own experiences, like if you want to tell us or uh, you want shout outs. You know, oh, if yeah. You, if you want yeah. anything like where, hey, can, can you bring this up and can you tell a little bit of my story? Anything like that. Just let us know. We're more than willing to, you know, I want all of our viewers and listeners to engage with us. Yes. It's not just us talking. We want to talk to you and we want to hear from you guys as well. And hopefully for, um, I have a surprise coming next week. Um, it's possible that um, the third podcast may not have the surprise, but the fourth podcast will. So I'll fill you in on that later. It's pretty yeah. cool. It's pretty cool. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching episode two of Let's Talk. And I guess we'll uh, see you next time. And we will talk to you all soon. Thank you for watching the podcast. Thank you for yep. watching the video. And I recommend doing both. You get to see both <laughs> the video version and the audio version. So you get the best of both worlds. All sure. right, guys. Peace out. Love you guys. Stay good. All right. See ya. See you guys.